we're heading into the end of police week here. Let's see who our officer is today. Hey, hey. Lance Montney. What's going on? Not too much. How about you? Good, good. Just another day at work. Just finished up work here. Just got home and fed the dog and put him in his kennel. Nice. I think this is the first time we've actually had somebody at home. We got hired together about 14 years ago. Uh, we've been in a lot of different units together. We did downtown patrol together. You went, uh, and obviously, into the canine unit, and uh, you're one of the dog handlers there and one of the lead trainers. You came out for that training day. Came out that? I said you came out for training day, day there uh, the other day for uh, for a couple of minutes and did a little work with us. Maybe uh, maybe you got that in the cards. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. I, I was going to say we I got pepper sprayed with you at the police college. I've been tasered, and now I've had the new experience with another use of force item that we have, and that's one of our canine. There you go, buddy. warming up stretch a little <laughs> looks good this is what you're gonna do you're the bad guy in this exercise we're just trying to hone the dog's uh, speed in and, and uh, apprehension technique so you're gonna pop out on on uh, on the same side of the blind that you're sitting on right there you're gonna pop out and the dog will target you uh, in the shoulders and take you down to the ground and that's it God, I'm a little nervous I have to admit hey we're all insured here <laughs> yeah. It was amazing having that experience and I appreciate you letting me have that experience earlier this week. Uh, just because there's no other tool that we have that have, performs that function uh, that a canine dog does. Well, that's what it's, it's a live search tool and it's a live apprehension tool. And, and we really, we don't have another apprehension tool. Uh, you know, today we don't have a robot that goes out and grabs people and, and holds them there until we get there and arrest them. And uh, we appreciate you coming out and taking a little taste of what we do and, uh, and showing some actual real fear to the dogs. You know, it's hard to replicate that. And, I almost saw a tear come out of your eyes. Yeah, no, thanks. I, I appreciate it. Like I said, uh, there's a little bit of adrenaline going, and I was second guessing myself when I volunteered. But like I said, I was glad to experience that because, um, and all the use of force that we have, it's nice to experience just to see what the impact is and how what it has on uh, a person that we're apprehending. We got. And as primitive as that looks and felt felt for you to be taken down by a police dog, I mean, we literally have hundreds upon hundreds of hours of training in for that that small little element that that uh there's literally elements within that element of just running down the field and stopping somebody and pulling them down to the ground safely taking the dog off and and, and causing only the amount of injury that's needed that's that's going to happen with it with the dog's jaw without making anything uh, anything excessive we're talking about hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours for that for that one for that one moment that uh, that you got to experience yeah no definitely the two new dogs that are rolling now they haven't been in service that's who you can hear squawking in the background uh rolex and arrow here they're under a year of service so we're just trying to get them get them as much experience as they can on the road and we still got our uh, our three vet veterans uh, rolling around fuse and hosco um and uh and uh, and cole cole that's been on the on the road for a year and a half now has really come into his own so we uh, we've been busy. We we have to maintain training. You know these these dogs. They they don't understand. Uh, you know we start taking uh, a couple of days or, or months off of work, and, and um, their competency levels drop significantly. And and when we're uh, when we're running around trying to support patrol and all the other units, uh, it uh, makes a big difference. It makes the risk management difference uh, to us. That's why we have to maintain the training that we're doing. Can you speak a little bit about possibly a situation that stands out in your mind that really showcases? the importance of having the canine unit and what it does in terms of function as supporting patrol? To be honest with you, I mean, there, there's been just in the last month, we've had uh, 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 several apprehension with, uh, uh, with specialty units. Uh, our dogs working hand in hand with, uh, with digs and ESU as a complement uh, to, uh, to what they do. We, we truly, we, ha we have a tool 
that, uh, that, that a machine doesn't reproduce. It's a search tool and it's an apprehension tool. It's a tool that, that runs away from us, that stops people, that allows us time to get there and arrest them. And, and, we, uh, and we've had a couple instances here just in the last month that they, that they were used uh, in, in, in operations. And it was just fundamental work on our part and great teamwork really all around from, uh, from a couple of different units. It, it's just, uh, it's just, a, just great work. Yeah, and like you said, uh, not only just in the apprehension aspect, but I remember hearing a little bit of stories, you know, about the searching aspect too, maybe finding somebody in a ceiling, finding somebody hiding in an attic, hiding in different areas. Like you said, there's no other tool like it that can do that for us. Yeah, we, 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 ha we have machinery that'll go up and look around in areas, but it doesn't search. These, these dogs are programmed by us to search for, for, for people not to just look around, but to actually pinpoint and, and, uh, and search. From an officer safety perspective for us, and, and even a proficiency ex, uh, uh, expectation from us, we send a dog into an area to search, you know, they're, they're smelling cupboards and behind doors and, and everything else, just things that aren't capable to, to human beings and to, uh, and to machinery right now. That's, uh, that's ultimately why, why, why we're doing this stuff, is to keep, keep officers safe, keep us, uh, us safe, keep the community safe. That's ultimately what, what's going on here. Here a big, uh, on our VIP days and the kids just love seeing the dogs. You must miss that a little bit, eh? The interaction that you've had with kids, talking to them about what your unit does for the service. Yeah, when a child watches these dogs fly fly across the field and and, uh, and jump and and, uh, and take a human being down to the ground, you could see the expression on their face that they, uh, you know, they most of them have pets at home and they only aspire that dogs will do uh, do things like this that they see on TV, and when they can see it, you know, 20, 30 feet out, out ahead of them in a uh, in a controlled environment, it's it's, uh, it's it's something to see and pass on pass on some of the passion and knowledge that I have to to youngsters. Who knows? Maybe one day uh, they're they're part of this program and uh, they're going to help apprehend people and find drugs and uh, and do all the other cool stuff that we do. So one of the things I think that's interesting about the canine unit and maybe a challenge is you have to bring the canine home with you. Can you? You're at your home right now. Can you speak to that? Yeah, absolutely. Like he has his own dog kennel right there oh. in the backyard. We, we come home like we're doing right now. We, uh, I kick him loose, let him run around the backyard with me so he can, uh, he can stretch his legs and then do whatever he's got to do. As a matter of fact, I'll take him out right now. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Lance. This, and this, this is the reason why I, I don't do anything with them in the backyard because if I, if I started if I started playing ball with them this is what it would be like the whole the whole time like no I remember you talking before uh, like about the dogs that you do get uh, where, where do you get your dogs and what are you looking for because I remember you saying something like I can see right now is you want dogs with a lot of energy this particular dog came from Slovakia. Some of our dogs come from uh, come from Germany. They literally come from uh, come come from all over the world. It's not going to be long. He's going to tear this ball directly out of my pocket. Nice. Can you can you do a little walk around uh, that kind of thing that you would show? Uh, well, you, you want him to heal on VIP day? Yeah. Who's I really don't do anything like this in the backyard because he's just going to go into his dog house and bark at me all day. Is what's going to happen. <laughs> right. But it, maybe i got a special treat for you. You want to see somebody special? Yeah. Yeah. What do you got for us? Look at this old guy. Oh, wow. I can see a little gray there. A little, a little bit. He's, he's almost 13 years old now. He, he's got run of the yard. Okay. Well, that's great to see too. That's uh, one of our canines in retirement now, right? W which one is that? That's uh, police dog Cato. So he's been retired for uh, for almost two years now. Right. Glad, to glad to see that he's doing well. And uh, he thanks for inviting us to your home, Lance. Thanks for showing us, talking to us a little bit about the canine unit, what you do day in and day out to help support our frontline officers and what your functions is there and uh, showing us <laughs> A little bit about your new dog and a little bit about the retired dog there, Kato. Hey, no, 
No, no, no problem at all, Andy. Uh, I think all the guys in the unit uh, appreciate the support from uh, from all over the service, from specialty units to patrol officers to, uh, to everybody upstairs. Have a good day. Yeah, you too. Take care.